Thank you, thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Speaker, the Premier has repeatedly said that she wants to create a new relationship Order. and to start listening to the people of Ontario. But in reality, she's not listening to communities like Hamilton, Kingston, and Toronto when they say they want a chance to decide if they want casinos. Despite these concerns, the OLG is moving full steam ahead with privatizing gambling without giving communities an opportunity to have their own say. Will the Premier start to really listen and do the right thing, which is to stop the privatization of the OLG and give Ontarians a choice and a chance to vote on whether they want casinos in their communities? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I know that the uh, Minister of Finance will want to comment on this, but I will just say, Mr. Speaker, I've been very clear that municipalities have the authority and the autonomy to decide whether they want to have casinos or not, Mr. Speaker. And as a government, as a government, we will not be imposing those organizations, those casinos, on any municipality, Mr. Speaker. It is up to the municipality to decide how it wants to consult with its, its constituency, with the people of the jurisdiction. It's up to them. They can have a referendum. They can do other consultation. But they are going to make the decision, Mr. Speaker. The provincial government is not going to decide whether a casino is located in a particular municipality. That is up to the community. Supplementary. Premier, the OLG plan to privatize is having an adverse effect on people in urban and rural Ontario. The cancellation of the slots at Racetrack Partnership caused a 50 per cent reduction in sales at last year's year yearling auction, which has crippled a once world-class breeding industry. Shame. The transitional Shame. panel Shame. report stated in black and white that about 20 to 30,000 jobs and people work full-time in the horse racing industry, and many of these jobs would be lost. Can the Premier tell us why she's so determined to push casinos on communities that don't want them and take jobs and investments away from communities that desperately need them? So, Mr. Speaker, the, the premise of both these questions is wrong. Both premises are wrong. The first premise is that the province is going to force the municipality to take casinos. That's just not true. We're not doing that. The second premise is, Mr. Speaker, that we don't want to have. Stop the clock. I. Uh, it's not helpful when the member from the party that's asking the question is heckling while I'm trying to get quiet, and I actually stop the clock. Now, before I move on, I do want to make a comment about that. First and foremost, I am doing my utmost, and as I said, I'm racing to the top. I'm doing my utmost to bring decorum into the place, but it can't be done unless you're with me. And I'm asking you, please come with me. And when a question gets asked from the opposition, it tends to get relatively quiet. But as soon as the answer is given, we then end up with the shouting. And I don't need anyone making editorial comments while I'm speaking either. Premier. Mr. Speaker, the second premise that somehow we don't want to have a sustainable horse racing industry is also wrong, Mr. Speaker. I've been very clear. I've been very clear that the panel, the transition panel report, Mr. Speaker, is going to be the guideline for our for our changes in the horse racing industry, Mr. Speaker. We, we have committed to a sustainable horse racing industry. It won't be exactly the same. It won't be exactly the same horse racing industry, yes, but we're in negotiations with the racetracks right now, Mr. Speaker. We want to have a sustainable industry. It will be changed, but it will be sustainable. Your question, the member from